Murray, 1959, Auditory Attention. Background. Every day, as we go about our daily tasks, our senses are bombarded with a huge amount of information about our surroundings. And it's not always possible for us to focus as we would like. The extent to which people can filter out or block the background noise while doing a task tends to vary from person to person. However, there is a particular phenomenon related to auditory attention, which most people can relate to. How often have you been in a deep conversation with someone or focused on a task, and then you hear someone say your name from across the room in a different conversation, even though you weren't consciously paying attention to them? This is known as the cocktail party effect, which is named after the fact that it can often occur when people are at a party. This effect suggests that if you hear your name being said, in another conversation across the room, while you're focusing on something else, your attention will be drawn to the conversation where your name was spoken. The subject of human attention has been the focus of much research in the field of psychology. In particular, there are two main methods that researchers have previously used to study attention. Selective attention, which is where people are presented with two or more messages simultaneously and asked to respond to just one of them, and divided attention, which is where people are presented with two or more messages and asked to respond to both or all of the messages. One of the more commonly used methods of measuring attention in the auditory sense has been through shadowing, where a participant wears a set of headphones with one message playing through one ear and another playing through the other. According to previous research, participants who shadowed or paid attention to messages that were present in one ear were unaware of any content of the messages that were presented to the other ear. The researchers in Moray's study wanted to conduct their own investigation to test whether they could replicate these findings, and also to find out whether any other factors can affect people's attention in dichotic listening tasks. The study, contis- the study consisted of three experiments. Experiment 1. AIM For the first experiment, the researchers simply aimed to find out whether individuals have selective attention. Sample. The participants in the first experiment were all undergraduate students and research workers of both sexes. However, a number of participants was not specified, and nor was the sampling technique. Methodology. The first experiment was a lab experiment, which used a repeated measures design. The independent variables were the dichotic listening test, and the recognition test. And the dependent variable was the number of words that were correctly recognised in the rejected messages. Procedure. Participants were asked to put on a set of headphones, which was connected to a tape recorder. Each earpiece has its own independent input from the tape recorder. The procedure involved a short list of simple words being presented to only one side of the participant's headphones, while a prose message, i.e. someone talking in full, naturally flowing sentences, was played to the other. The participants were asked to shadow, aka listen, to the side that played the prose message. The two messages were played at the same volume, as judged by each individual participant, and the list of words was repeated 35 times. All passages were recorded by one male speaker. After the experiment was over, participants were asked to report all that they could about the content that was in the rejected message and they were then given a recognition test that used similar material, but was not present in either the word list or the prose message as a control. There was also a gap of around 30 seconds between the end of the shadowing task and the recognition task. Results. The first experiment found that there was no trace of the rejected message being recognised by the participants. However, it was found that there was a significant difference between the number of words recognised that were present in the recognition test, the control, and the number of words recognised from the shadowed message. The researchers concluded that the 30-second delay between the end of the shadowing task and the recognition task was unlikely to have caused the rejected message to be blocked, since some of the words from early on in the shadowed message had been recognised. The findings also confirmed the results of the previous research that selective attention is a real phenomenon. Experiment 2. AIM. Building on the findings of the first experiment, the second experiment aimed to test whether selective attention can be penetrated by messages that have an effective value, i.e. the cocktail party effect. Sample. 
As with the first experiment, the participants of the second experiment consisted of undergraduate students and research workers of both sexes. A total of 12 participants took part. Methodology. The second experiment also had a repeated measures design. The independent variables were whether the types of instructions that were asked were preceded by the participant's name, effective or non-effective, and the dependent variables were the number of effective instructions and how many times the instructions were heard. Procedure. Participants were then again asked to put headphones on and listen to 10 short passages of fiction. The experimenters told them that their responses would be recorded and that the aim of this experiment was to score as few mistakes as possible. Instructions were inserted at the start of each passage, telling participants to listen to their right ear. During some of the passage, additional instructions were inserted, telling them that they may stop or change to their other ear. For other passages, there were no instructions, which were inserted randomly into the sequence of passages that did contain additional instructions. In two instances of the additional instructions that were given, the participants were not warned. As with the first experiment, the passages were all read by a male voice in a steady monotone of around 130 words per minute and checked by an avometer to ensure that there was no significant increase in volume when the participant's name was spoken. The participants' responses to the instructions were tape recorded and later analysed. Results it was found that most participants ignored the instructions that were inserted into the passages because they said that they thought these were an attempt to distract them. The mean number of instructions that were heard during the passage was calculated in both the independent variable groups and it was found that there was a significant difference between the number of times the instruction was heard in the passage preceded by the participant's name compared with those without a name. The researchers suggested that this shows that the effective value of a message is very important in determining whether it will penetrate the selective attentional barrier, and thus confirming the cocktail party effect. In addition, there were only 4 out of 20 occasions during the effective instructions where the participants actually made a change to the other message. Experiment 3. AIM. Following on from the second experiment, the third experiment focused on whether messages that included numbers might be remembered rather than including the participant's name. The researchers wanted to test whether numbers that weren't considered important would be recognised, i.e. not their date of birth or home address. Sample. As with the first and second experiment, the participants of the third experiment were all undergraduate students or research workers of both sexes, consisting of two groups of 14 participants, making a total of 28. Methodology. The third experiment used an independent measures design, the two independent variables were whether numbers were inserted into one or two messages and whether the participants were subsequently asked about the message they were shadowing or whether they just had to recall numbers. The dependent variable was the amount of numbers that were correctly recalled by the participants at the end of the passage. Procedure. The participants were asked to shadow one of two dichotic messages, which were played simultaneously. Within some of the messages, numbers were inserted towards the end either in both messages or just one. The position of the numbers within the messages varied, as did whether the numbers were relative to each other in the dichotic messages. One group of participants was told that they would be asked questions about the content of the shadowed message at the end of each message, while the other group was simply told to remember as many numbers as they could. The difference between the mean amount of numbers reported from the two conditions were then analysed for significance. Results. It was found that there was no significant difference between the two conditions in the amount of numbers that were correctly identified, leading the researchers to conclude that the number did not become important enough to break through the attentional barrier. Conclusions. The researchers had several conclusions based on the results. Firstly, in any situation where someone is selectively focusing their attention on a message that is being played in one ear and blocking a message in the other ear, almost the entire content of the rejected message will fail to penetrate the attentional block. Moreover, even a short list of simple words that are spoken repeatedly will have no trace of being remembered if someone focuses their attention on another message. However, information that is effective to a person, i.e. important information such as their name, can penetrate the block enabling them to recognise and remember instructions if their name is spoken prior to the rejected message. The perceived effective value of a message in relation to the person's hearing it 
is very important in ensuring that they recognize it and remember it. It is very important to make neutral information, such as numbers that are not significant to a person, important enough to break through the attentional block in dichotic shadowing. Evaluations. The study consisted of three separate laboratory experiments, meaning that there was a high level of control of the conditions and procedures. However, the fact that the study took place in a very simulated environment may reduce its ecological validity, since it's not necessarily similar to real life. The results consisted of quantitative data, which enabled the researchers to calculate the significance of differences between conditions. This also made the results more reliable, since it's easier to replicate the research. There was also a limited amount of qualitative data collected. For example, in the results from the second experiment, where participants explained that they ignored the instructions that were inserted into the passages because they thought that these were an attempt to distract them. This provides in-depth, insightful data to help the researchers understand exactly how the participants rationalise their behaviour. The experiments used a mix of repeated measures and independent measures design. A strength of using repeated measures design is that it avoided any individual differences, since the same participants were used, thus reducing any extraneous variables relating to the participants' ability and improving the study's internal validity. It also requires fewer participants to be recruited, which saves time and financial cost. A potential disadvantage of this, however, is that repeated measures design can result in order effect, due to having practiced their technique in the previous condition. A strength of independent measures design, in contrast to repeated measures, is that there are no order effects, since different participants are used in each condition. In this study, this helped to ensure that researchers were indeed measuring the effects of different variables on selective attention, rather than order effects. On the other hand, the fact that different participants were used from each group meant that there could have potentially been individual differences in their performance, which were not due to the independent variable, thus reducing the study's validity. During the experiments, an effort was made to standardise the procedure for all participants by ensuring that the dichotic messages that were played to each ear were the same volume on each side, to ensure the messages' volume didn't affect participants' ability to hear and recall the content. Moreover, all passages were recorded by the same male speaker to ensure that the voice was not an extraneous variable between messages, which helped to improve the study's internal reliability. However, there is a missed opportunity here. The researchers could have used a separate condition, where the speaker was female, to see the effects of the gender of the speaker on attention blocks. Since the researchers did not do this, you could say that the results would not be generalizable to the context of someone paying attention to female voices. The sample of participants used in the study consisted solely of undergraduate students and less research workers, which was not representative of the wider population, and therefore less generalizable. The study was also only conducted at a university in England, meaning that the results were relatively ethnocentric. 